Good evening everyone. Welcome you all to the live Facebook session of this evening. Let me introduce myself. I am Anita Devi handling postgraduate admissions and we will be discussing about the same here. Let me take you through the presentation which would take approximately 20 minutes of your time but that will help you to take up a life changing decision. During this session we will have our current students, parents and dean of the postgraduate medicine program giving their views. You can post your questions and comments and we'll answer them by the end of the session. So let's begin. Is there an alternate solution to NEET and DNB? I'm sure all those of you who are watching this live would have attempted these examinations couple of times and you all would be experts in preparing for the same. We are going to do a scientific evaluation based on the statistics available. Now this data is sourced from World Health Organization. Now India is a leading provider of physicians, surgeons and specialists across the globe. And do you know that 38% of doctors in United States of America are Indians. However, India has a pathetic doctor-patient ratio. Currently, India is holding the second uh, you know, most populated country in the world. And by 2050, we will be the most populated country in the world. And as per the doctor-patient ratio, we are not even 0.49 now at present. Can you imagine how it would be in 2050? And this is a uh, slide which shows the private sector has a strong presence in India's healthcare sector. And if you go through this, it shows that more than 74% of the healthcare sector is dealt by private, not by government. Now, it is the need of the hour that India has to pro uh, you know, provide more qualified physicians and specialists so that we can cater to the need of our population. Private sector hospitals has the affordability to procure latest technologies in terms of modern medicine, infrastructure and machineries. Okay, now here this slide shows you the total number of MBBS seats which is around 52,000 and uh, PG seats are 28,000. That includes MDMS and DNB. I think, uh, you know, the government has mentioned that they have increased 4,000 seats, but that is a big question mark whether the reality is there. Now, uh, I would like all you to calculate or do a small, uh, you know, calculation here that is probability of your PG seat. Now, here it shows the number of seats, MBBS seats is 52,000 and into number of years post your MBBS. So, just do a small calculation. Imagine you have passed out in 2010 and it's been more than seven years now. So how many examinations you might have written including AIPG or NEET or DNB or JIPMER, AIMS, any kind of examination. How many attempts you would have given during the seven years. And at the bottom if you see the example it, st it states 52,000 MBBS seats into seven years which will be giving a figure of 364,000 but now ultimately you're competing with 168,000 students. So out of the 28,000 PG seats available in India whether it might be an MDMS or a DNB uh, 52,000 students are passing out every year to compete. So which means every year there are students left out without PG seats and the number of students aspiring to you know, get a PG seat is accumulating and becoming higher and higher. So effectively what is your probability of securing a PG seat in India and that too of your interested specialization. Now here I would like to include another point that this 52,000 MBBS seats is only from India. We have to include another 5,000 more who have completed their MBBS from other countries like China, Nepal, Philippines and those who have completed their M MCI screening exam which is the FMGE. So all put together here your probability that is this funnel, this funnel will show that your percentage will be like approximately 1 out of 1,68,000. So that's a huge figure, don't you think? Please remember, you're competing with fresh graduates who have studied in the updated curriculum. So, you know, they are in continuation with studies. And you're also competing with students who are like kind of become experts. They would have attempted these examinations at least like, you know, twice or thrice. And those who are not even going to job and full time sitting and preparing for maybe like 8 hours or 12 hours through the best of coaching centers like Dan's, Bhatia or, you know, speed coaching centers, etc. 
So along with this, you have a complicated quota system. So with all this, are you still feeling lucky that you, know, you will get a PG seat of your choice? That's a big question mark. So what is your alternate to NEET and DNB? Or is there an alternate to NEET and DNB? So I have just you know, put in a small image here um, you know, that is circulating in all the internet blogs and you know, Facebook you might have also seen. So a person who is aspiring to become an MBBS might be you know, looking like the, you know, the first half. But after you have undergone your MBBS and then a couple of years for your PhD preparation and then finally your you know, MD with your super specialization, you might you know, end up like this. You know, if you feel that yes, we do have certain alternate options to NEET and DNB, this would be the first, um, you know, among the options. United States of America. Yes, everybody will be aspiring to get into United States of America somehow, right? So, um, I think most of you might have um, gone through the cycle where everybody knows it's United States Medical Licensing Examination, all step one, step two, CK, CS, and then you know, finally you get an ECFMG certified person and even you obtain your ECFMG, then will you be able to get through matching? That's a big question mark. Will you get through that or, you know, will you be ready to spend another three to seven years? And finally, it is your both certified MD or MS. So that's going to take somewhere around um, eight to nine years approximately as per the statistics. So this is a hard path. Um, as you all know, NEET is tough and USMLE is toughest examination ever. So if not United States of America, what is my next option? Yes, this is a second option for you, Australia. I think many of you might be, um, you know, attempted Australian Medical Council examination also. Then in that case, you all will agree how tough even that examination is. And once you get through that, then you have three pathways, which is standard pathway, competent pathway, and then specialist pathway. Uh, trust me, guys, even this is really hard enough, but not so tough like United States Medical Licensing Examination. But overall, as per the report, only 2% of Indians get through this. So this is also tough. So if not Australia, then what is the next option? Yes, United Kingdom. This is also one of the most developed country in terms of medicine. Uh, United Kingdom, as you all know, it is PLAB, Professional Linguistic Assessment Board. So how long do you think you might be, you know, you might take to crack PLAB? Uh, maybe two years approximately. So if you're taking two years for PLAB, then you have your eyelids as well. And once you get into it, then UK has a long procedure for residency to get through your PG. So this particular uh, you know, slide explains what are all the options. See, if you are a national of a country outside UK, EEA, that is European Association or Switzerland, then you, know, you have these options. And finally, if you look into it, um, you know, this particular part where it states, do you have one of the following? Either you should have a sponsorship under an arrangement approved by GMC, which is General Medical Council, that's like our Medical Council of India or you have to have a General Medical Council approved postgraduate qualification and what do you mean by that? Which means any of the PG qualification awarded by United Kingdom or uh, an eligibility to enter the GP, GP is a general practitioner as you all know or specialist register. So if you have any of these then you have this opportunity wherein you know, you can enter into United Kingdom without a PLAB test. Okay, this MCA Gazette notification, I'm not sure if many of you might be aware, but this is about Royal College qualifications of United Kingdom. Many of you might have seen this qualification in a senior most consultants name board like MRCP UK, FRCP, FRCR or MRCS and you know, many more. This is being awarded by Royal College of United Kingdom, which is in existence since 1500. They are an examination conducting body and any MBBS doctor across the globe can apply and write the examination to become a member or fellow of that particular Royal College. So what is the use of becoming a member of or a fellow you know, of the Royal College is, you know, you get highly paid, not only in India, wherever you go, 
and you get highly placed you know above a consultant level so this uh, gazette notification indicates that if you possess a royal college qualification then you can get a job in government uh, hospitals as a PG doctor and you can even enter as an assistant professor in government teaching institutions. So this is very much available in Medical Council of India and if you want this information you can post your email address or your WhatsApp number in the comment box and we will be able to share this to you so that you will have more information about this Royal College. All right. Now. Um, a small insight of um, you know showing how much would be a salary for an MBBS doctors so you know here it is it shows that the salary for an MBBS doctor is hardly 20,000 rupees so this is really shocking and alarming and this is from a leading uh, you know Indian magazine newspaper so it's alarming because we have spent nearly five and a half six years to do your education but in spite of which if we are earning 20,000 rupees that's very less so in this competitive world we have to improve by having more PG qualifications but with NEET and DNB that's going to be a Herculean task so what are we going to do not sure about your future not sure what you're going to do uh, the possibility of NEET and DNB is very tough. The possibility of maybe a USMLE examination or Australian Medical Council examination or even like PLAB is tough. So what can you do? Okay, now here we provide you a solution for you that is Texilla American University in academic partnership with University of Central Nicaragua is offering postgraduate programs for you. To give you a small insight of our university, we have three campuses located in various countries. Number one, we have a main campus in South America. The second campus is in Middle East and the third campus is in Africa. So we will be expanding our horizon globally and we're going to come up with more campuses. And postgraduate programs are conducted in India. Now, as you see in this particular slide, now we are listed in many I mean, international accreditations and we have affiliations. Now our university is listed in International Association of Universities and Association of Commonwealth Universities. So we have started uh, our programs since 2010 and University of Central Nicaragua is in existence for more than 15 plus years and they are also listed in UNESCO. Now we are offering fellowship with Royal College UK exam training. So this is a postgraduate program which we are offering and I'm going to quickly run through the features of the program. What are we offering you? Now this is a three year program. So this is just like any other PG program in India. So it will be a comprehensive three year program and you will be posted in approved hospitals that are teaching hospitals in India whom we have tied up with and you will be a full time student in the particular hospital in the required department and we provide you structured training based on the Royal College pattern. So, you know, since you will be studying on a higher end curriculum, the passing percentage is really high. Now, the teaching faculty from across the globe, that is, we have consultants, specialists and Royal College UK certified doctors who will be training you through different methods. So, in future slides, I will be, you know, explaining as to how the training will be happening with the teaching methods. And we also have systematic training for postgraduate fellowship program. Now, um, you all might be thinking like, you know, what are all the specializations being offered in the university? So these are the list of specializations that we are offering. Internal medicine, pediatrics, OBG, obstetrics and gynecology, surgery and radiology. Now, along with this specialization, we have also mentioned as Royal College of Physicians. So, as you all know, internal medicine is physicians. So, simultaneously, we will be training you for the Royal College qualification, which is MRCP, that is Member of Royal College of Physicians of United Kingdom. And similarly, for pediatrics, it is Royal College of Pediatricians and Child Health, and OBG is Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, and surgery is Royal College of Surgeons which is MRCS member and then radiology is a direct fellow level which is Royal College of Radiologists fellow of Royal College All right so here 
you can choose from any of these five specializations which is available with us okay now uh, where are you going to study here the opportunity is as I mentioned you can choose your specialization and you can also choose the location where you want to study now uh, you might be present pan India some of you might be in South India or like say Eastern India Western India so we have clinical sites all over India and this is a list so somebody in Maharashtra we have it in Mumbai and Pune in Mumbai we have three hospitals and all these hospitals are multi-speciality corporate hospitals with DNB teaching faculties available so these names will definitely indicate their brand value Fortis so everybody knows Fortis Fortis is uh, is a brand name which has you know uh, branches all over India and just lock hospital and we also have Saifi hospital in Mumbai similarly in Pune we have two associations one is Ruby Hall Clinic and uh, the other one is KEM which is King Edward Memorial Hospital. So those of you who are in and around Maharashtra, you can choose your location from these five hospitals. Now uh, moving to Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, so we have five hospitals. So the names uh, Max Cure Hospital, previously it was called as Medicity, that is in proper Hyderabad and we have uh, St. Teresa Hospital, Muslim Maternity Hospital, NICE and Andhra Hospital which is in Vijivada. So this is a list in Andhra Pradesh. Now those of you who are in Karnataka, the list is San Philomena's. San Philomena Bangalore is a mission hospital. So you have two good patient flow and Santosh Hospital in Bangalore. These are the locations in Karnataka. Now coming to Tamil Nadu, we have three hospitals. One is Vijaya Hospital and the other one is Kamakshi Hospital and the final one is KG Hospital. KG Hospital in Coimbatore. And we also have it in our neighboring state Kerala which is Anantapuri Hospital in Trivandrum. Okay, now you might be asking what about North? Yes, see North we have in West Bengal it is Peerless Hospital and Medica Hospital and in Delhi we have it in Mata Chanandevi Hospital. Now let's hear it from one of our students who are currently pursuing the program with us our university in one of our clinical sites. So you know he will be able to tell you why he chose our institution and how the program is being conducted and what is the feedback. Hi this is Dr. Jadeep. Uh, I am an MD resident second year from Texla American University. Uh, this is regarding the FSI sessions that we have and uh, till now the sessions have been pretty informative and uh, the best part about the sessions is that we directly get to talk to different consultants throughout India who are taking classes for us and that's a great opportunity because not only the topics that they take even the topics that we have difficulties in, if we ask the consultants or the professors who are taking classes for us, they oblige and they do help us with it. Besides that, the topics that are chosen for FSI are very difficult topics. For example, the last topic was scrotal emergencies and those topics are not easily found in the books and it needs a lot of elaborate information which is available through this FSI, FSI sessions. So overall, I'm very happy about it and hope Texilla continues carrying on with its FSI program. Thank you. We are providing you daily practice tests for Royal College examinations in partnership with UK based leading test prep companies. So that is going to help you to crack the Royal College examinations. And we also provide you periodic face to face objective structured clinical exam which is called as OSCE with mock stations that is actually similar to Royal College practical examinations. So in my next slides, I'm going to talk about uh, you know how many um, examinations are available for every part so in that I'm going to explain these mock stations for you now this particular slide is very important and I would request you all to go through this whoever is aspiring for a pediatrician to become a specialist in pediatrician please go through this MRCPCH which is member of Royal College of Pediatricians and Child Health and similarly for the other specializations as well so if you look at this uh, slide carefully it shows that MRCP for physicians it has three parts which is part one part two and then the final clinicals is called the paces clinical examination 
and uh, MRCPCH for pediatricians has four parts which is part one two and three will be multiple choice questions or it can be single best answers or it can be extended matching as well but the final part is the clinical examination and uh, those of you who wanted to specialize in surgeons lucky guys you only have two parts part one is a multiple choice question and then the final part is clinical examination and for MRCOG obstetrics and gynecologists you have three parts part one two is multiple choice questions and final is clinical examination similarly for radiologists it is you know two parts of multiple choice questions and the final part is clinicals so this is an overall gist here there might be a small change that is as I told you it might be multiple choice questions in terms of like say modules or it can be in the basic subjects now uh, many of you might be thinking that or might have heard from your friends that Royal College examination is tough to pass it's absolutely not it is really easy to pass if you have given your you know full training maybe like how you put through your training in NEET the same kind of training in Royal College examination clubbed with our Texilla University's support it is really easy to get through and I'll tell you how see uh, for all the parts of uh, Royal College that is physicians Royal College MRCP MRCPCH uh, surgery it is available in India the exam centers are available in India when I meant exam centers it means any of the reputed multi-speciality hospitals which has the capacity to test you are considered to be exam centers and these three uh, specializations have centers in India mostly in metropolitan cities like Delhi, Kolkata, Bangalore and Mumbai okay but for MRCOG that is OG and FRCR the you know first two parts are in India but the final exams has to be taken in any of the destinations like United Kingdom um, or Singapore or Hong Kong based on the availability maybe in future if Royal College is able to identify uh, some hospitals which has the capacity to conduct the examination then we might have the centers in India itself okay now these examinations has a frequency of you know two, two uh, twice or thrice in a year so it's not like you know uh, a neat examination which will be happening only once a year these examinations are conducted twice or thrice and most importantly every part has six attempts which means part one MRCP part one will have six attempt for you to get through um, and then part two has six attempts and even the clinical examination has six attempts so um, the validity is the day you pass your part one examination you have seven years time to clear the final part and that is absolutely easy so this is an in inbuilt program with our fellowship so here uh, the concept is during your three years you will be able to clear these examinations so an internal medicine doctor will be attempting the MRCP part one by end of first year and then once you clear it you move on to the part two in the second year and then the clinicals in the final year so that's how the program is structured so there is a high probability for you all to clear these Royal College qualifications okay now as I have mentioned in my previous slides uh, the benefit of Royal College here it states in United Kingdom see though USMLE uh, you have to take it up and it is tough United Kingdom is somewhat easy to enter through this method so here as it shows from your graduation and then FY1 which is called as a foundation year level 1 um, you know you will be placed in any of the uh, government hospitals for a year and then at the end of the year you might have an evaluation then you move on to the FY2 foundation year level 2 and then you will get into your core your specialization which is the speciality training level 1 so starting from tr level 1 you have level 6 that is speciality training level 6 now the advantage here is somebody who has cleared their Royal College whether it might be an MRCP or an MRCS you are already at ST3 speciality training level 3 so that's a big advantage for you all and 
in as in uh, uh, states in my previous slide if you have an MRCP which is from um, you know United Kingdom itself you might get an entry into United Kingdom without writing a PLAB examination so uh, don't you think that's an advantage for you all without writing a licensing examination you can get into United Kingdom that is possible but you have to clear your Royal College examinations for which we are training you all right so you might be asking what is in it for me now the answer is these are the highlighted points so you don't need to pay any donation or capitation unlike other uh, private institutions in India and you get to choose your entrusted specialization most important because many of you might have uh, got say around 20,000 or 30,000 ranking you might be aspiring to become a surgeon or a radiologist but ultimately you might have got only an ENT or or anesthesia or maybe a non-clinical subject so you will not be in a position to compromise on your specialization but in our university we give you opportunity to choose your interested specialization and you can also choose the location where you want to study and uh, you get the option of dual qualification so when I meant dual qualification uh, you know you are getting trained for the Royal College qualification during this three years and that will you know help you earn a master degree a master of medicine or a master of surgery in whichever specialization you are taking up so that will be awarded by you know University of Central Nicaragua so you're going to get a master degree from us and you will also get the Royal College qualification whether an MRCP or an MRCS so this is your dual qualification opportunity available for you from our university now with this qualifications you get to work all across the globe not only in India all across the globe and above that you can do your super specializations somebody who's doing an internal medicine or a surgery you can do your super specializations as well and NMC um, some of uh, some of you might not have heard about this NMC what is NMC it is National Medical Commission so uh, at the bottom I have placed the link and this is sourced from Times of India this was in the month of July it states that Medical Council of India will be replaced by NMC National Medical Commission alright so uh, to get to know more details you can you know check this out and if you want to have this then you can mention your email address or your uh, you know whatsapp number also we will be able to share this information and more information on that now let's hear it from our uh, Dean of Postgraduate Medicine Dr. Ranjan Venkateshan who is an MBBS, MDOBG, MRCOG and FRCOG UK he has vast experience in United Kingdom for more than 12, 12 years and he is a renowned gynecologist. So he is a dean and let's hear it from him. Hello friends, I am Dr. Anjan, Dean of Postgraduate Medical Education at Texel American University. I wanted to have a little chat with you regarding your future plans for joining a postgraduate seat in your chosen speciality and your chosen hospital. As you know, Every year, thousands of students pass the MBBS examination and all of them, all of, including you, want to have a chance to crack the postgraduate entrance examinations to get a seat in a postgraduate speciality of your choice. Only a fraction are able to gain postgraduate qualifications and that too, not necessarily in the hospital or the speciality of their choice. Now, when this happens, you are left with very few options. One, either to donate a large amount of money in order to secure a postgraduate qualification in the specialty that you want, and this can range anything from two to four to six crores nowadays. The, in fact, the going cost for a radiology seat is four to six crores in some of the states in this country. Or the alternative is to go for courses which are being offered by institutions such as Texel American University and what Texel American University does is to offer you a master's in surgery and a master's in medicine or in the in the speciality that you want without having to appear for any examination in the hospital closest to your home or whichever hospital you desire so 
this disadvantage that you get by joining this university, you will not find with any of the other courses or any of the other examinations that you plan to take. How we do this is that we train you for the th three-year program leading to the degree of Master of Surgery or Master of Medicine in the specialty that you have chosen. In addition, during these three years, we train you for the Royal College examinations in the United Kingdom. Now, what we do here is, since the Royal College examinations demand that after your MBBS, you need one year of postgraduate training, uh, hospital training, in a hospital that is recognized by the Royal Colleges, before appearing for the part one examination, this is the kind of training that we provide here for you. Along with that, we give you coaching in the practical examinations as well as the theoretical examinations that you will need to undertake to pass the examination of the Royal College. Subsequently, we train you for the second part and the final part of the examination that will lead to the award of the degree. For this purpose, we have concentrated on providing you objective structured clinical examinations, multiple choice questions, case-based study reports, article reviews, and a thesis at the end of the third year so that you can get your master's in surgery or medicine degree with us and also be properly coached for the Royal College examinations in the United Kingdom. The advantage of clearing the Royal College examinations is that this is a universally recognized postgraduate qualification. With this qualification, any doctor can practice literally anywhere in the world, including India. And that's a big advantage for you because you, right now, with an MBBS degree, would not be able to gain much foothold, nor be able to gain much of a salary if you start working in a hospital setting as a basic doctor or a RMO. When you pass this examination, you will be treated as a specialist, a consultant, and since this examination is recognized worldwide and has great merit, it will be of immense benefit to you to appear for this examination. And the coaching for this is what we tra tra train you in the next, in the three years that you are with us. The teachers who will be teaching you will be Royal College qualified consultants. So they have the best knowledge about how this examination is to be held and what is the coaching and training to be given for this examination. We have taken great efforts to ensure that you get the best training possible for this examination and also for getting your master's in surgery or medicine degree. So I would strongly advise you not to lose this opportunity, but go ahead and apply for Texel American University as soon as possible. This in the, we have two intakes. The one intake is in March and the second intake in September. The current intake is ongoing at the moment and will possibly close in within a month's time by the end of this month. We would strongly, I would strongly recommend all of you to think and decide about this, plan it out with your parents and then come back to us and ask us any questions that you would need in terms of clarifications whether before joining this course. Thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing. Thank you. Now, uh, as I was talking more about the Royal College qualifications, I wanted to tell you guys as to where all these Royal College qualifications are recognized. If you remember my previous slide where I showed you the MCA Gazette um, you know, notification, it is very much accepted in Government of India. Now, apart from India, where all can you practice? So this is a list of top countries, developed countries, where the Royal College qualifications are accepted. And if you see it is United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Singapore, New Zealand, UAE, Malaysia, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Africa. So this is a small list of where it is recognized. But apart from this, it is recognized in more than 120 plus countries. So as I told you, you will have high salary package as well as your position will be higher if you possess this Royal College qualification. It is an on-demand qualification in many of these countries and uh, to share uh, you know, a couple of countries, um, United Arab Emirates. If you get into any of the Emirates, the data is available in the internet. The package is uh, more than you know, $365,000 um, if you have five years post MRCP and you can also get into a tier two. 
So this is available in, in internet and in their medical councils as well. So that's a small example and all the other countries also, you know, the same. Now, this is again a small indication of how the rec uh, Royal College doctors are being recognized in India. Now, if you look at this advertisement, this is again from Hindu. Um, you know, um, Kovai Medical Center and Hospital is a reputed multi-speciality NABH hospital in Coimbatore, which is in Tamil Nadu. And here, if you look at these two renowned consultants, uh, you know, number one is Dr. Varadarajan Kumar, and he is an MRCP UK and FRCP UK. If you look at this, it's after MBBS, it is an MRCP UK and an FRCP, and he is a consultant medical and radiation oncologist. And Dr. G. Manon Mani, she is MBBS MRCPCH, as you all know, which is for a pediatrician. She is an, a consultant pediatrician and neonatologist. So, you know, uh, I'm sure they're being paid very high because they possess these qualifications and they're already a consultant. Okay, so with this qualification, you can definitely enter into any of the private corporate sectors or in your own clinics and definitely into government sectors as well. And this slide will show you uh, the salary that a Royal College doctor will be obtaining in India and abroad. So this is a list. If you can go through uh, the highlighted points, this is a list of the salaries which is being awarded and it is really high rather than just processing an MBBS or, you know, um, an MD or a DNB, if you additionally have this Royal College qualification, the package is really high. Okay, now, you know, uh, please go through this disclaimer as well, okay, before making an informed decision. And I'm sure this slide will be uh, really informative for you, um, you know, whoever is looking forward for an alternative to NEET and DNB examinations. So we have given you, you know, an insight of how we are conducting the program and how our program is an alternate solution for you in India. So if you need to have uh, more information about our program, kindly, um, you know, put in your email address and your WhatsApp number in the comments and we can get back to you. And in addition, we are coming to your cities. Uh, that is this Saturday, that is 9th of September, we are coming to uh, Trivandrum and in Bangalore where you can directly meet us and you can have more information about the program and you might be eligible for a scholarship as well. And this fees would be very much affordable and you just need to pay it in three installments on a yearly basis and you can obtain bank loan opportunities as well. And next Saturday, which is 16th of September, we are coming to, you know, Mumbai and in Chennai as well as in Kolkata. Three locations on 16th of September and on 17th, we will be in Mumbai. Okay. And the following Saturday, which is 23rd of September, we are available in Hyderabad as well as in Delhi. So if these programs are conducted in hospitals, that is our affiliated hospitals. So if you are in these locations, you can come in to any of our hospital with prior appointment and that will help you to meet our students who are currently studying there. You can also meet the medical director who will be able to explain the program. And then if you want, you can meet the department HOD or look for yourself the departments and with that will help you to make an informed decision. Thank you all for watching live and sparing this time. Um, I hope this is very informative for you. So I would request you to share this link to your friends and colleagues who are also looking forward for a PG opportunity in India and abroad. So do share with them. And those of you who are interested in knowing more information, kindly mention your email address, your contact number, and if possible, your interest in specialization as well. And uh, I'm sure we had a lot of questions coming in. So if you have mentioned your email address and contact number, we can get back to you in person to give you all the detailed information and clarify all your doubts. And all the best for a bright career. And I'm sure we will be looking in as a consultant or a specialist in near future very shortly. Thank you.